oh ma'am, the price of the AFS security that we bought at the beginning of this period fell 5% in the market. Hmm. If it continues to fall, we won't be able to sell it in this period, we need to hold it till next period. All right, then we have to write it down in this year's financial report, right? Yes, please write down its fair value at the end of this period. Okay, ma'am. But how do we record this in the report? It seems like it had been discussed before in accounting class. Is there anything I can use to refresh my memory? Aha! Let me rewatch my final project YouTube video regarding this topic. Price fluctuations of investment accounts always happen in every period. These will affect the company's unrealized gain or loss, as well as its decision to hold or sell. Then, how does an accountant write down the unrealized gain or loss in the report? What if it transforms into realized gain or loss? And where do they record it? Income statement? Or balance sheet? Securities cover a wide range of assets. They are divided into broad categories, those are equity securities, debt securities, derivative securities, and hybrid securities. Two of which will be our main focus are equity securities and debt securities. Equity securities are financial assets that represent a claim of earnings and assets of a corporation. The characteristic that most defines an equity security, differentiating it from most other types of securities, is ownership. Debt securities are financial assets that define the terms of a loan between an issuer, or the borrower, and an investor, or the lender. Debt securities do not include futures contracts and option contracts. The terms of a debt security typically include the principal amount to be returned upon maturity of the loan, interest rate payments, and the maturity date or renewal date. Classification of equity or debt securities or both are held to maturity securities, trading securities, available for sale securities, and equity method securities. Available for sale securities will be explained further in this video. Available for sale securities may include equity and debt securities. They are in between trading and held to maturity securities. Furthermore, they are non-strategic and can usually have a ready market price available. Available for sale securities are not bought or sold for the sole purpose of realizing a short-term capital gain. They may be purchased as tools to diversify away some of the risks that a company's investment portfolio currently carries. Available for sale securities can also be bought with the intent to be held for the long term, rather than realizing a quick capital gain. They can also be used to provide liquidity to a company in case cash is needed to finance its operations or repay its investors. Available for sale securities can broadly be categorized into Financing instruments and investment securities. First, financing instruments. These types of instruments refer to securities that are issued by a company in the form of bonds for the purposes of financing the company's business operations. The securities are recorded as liabilities on the company's balance sheet since the company is expected to provide a certain return to investors that purchase the securities. Bonds have a legal obligation to issue coupon payments and repay the bondholders the face value of the bonds at the time of maturity. For example, if you purchase a bond at face value of $100 and with a coupon payment of 2%. Over three years, the issuing company must return the original $100 investment at the end of the three years, plus pay a 2% coupon every six months over the three years. Second, investment securities. Investment securities are securities purchased by a company for the purpose of making an eventual capital gain or to diversify away from the other risks associated with its investment portfolio. Available for sale securities are presented in the balance sheet as either current assets or non-current assets at fair value. They are often listed as non-current assets. However, if the intent is to hold for less than one year, they are current assets. Available for sale securities purchased when exercising an option are recorded at the option strike price, plus the fair value of the option at the exercise date.
if the option is worthless and the same security is bought in the market, the security is recorded at the market value plus the remaining carrying amount of the option premium. Companies report available for sale securities at fair value. Changes in the fair value of the securities are recorded in an account titled Unrealized Gains or Losses. The unrealized gains or losses derived from AFS securities are reflected in the other comprehensive income classification within the equity section of the balance sheet. If they are sold, unrealized gains or losses become realized, then they are included in the income statement. In order to better understand how we account in AFS securities transactions, we will take a closer look at an example. First of all, let's say on April 1st, we purchased a total of $185,000 of available for sale securities with the following details in the table. Our journal entry is then a debit of $185,000 to available for sale securities. In fact, they are assets we paid cash for, so we credit cash $185,000. On September 1st, let's say a cash dividend of $20,000 is received. Then our journal entry is going to be cash debited for $20,000, and this will become a credit of dividend revenue of $20,000. Now, let's assume that on December 31st, the market prices of the securities change. The analysis of the year-end portfolio will be as follows. Unfortunately, they are going down in price, the total market value is now $180,500, which resulted in the necessity of a fair value adjustment. This adjustment is an unrealized loss of $4,500. The entry then will be a debit of unrealized loss of $4,500 that will be shown on our balance sheet in equity section. While the credit of the valuation allowance of $4,500 will go along with our debit $185,000 of available for sale securities, shown together in the assets section. The unrealized loss on available for sale securities in the period is disclosed in the statement of comprehensive income as follows. As you can see, unrealized holding loss is written as other comprehensive income here. In the balance sheet, $4,500 unrealized loss, other comprehensive income, is shown in the stockholders' equity section as accumulated other comprehensive loss. While $4,500 valuation allowance, along with $185,000 available for sale securities, is shown in the asset section. To conclude, available for sale securities can be either debt or equity securities, purchased with the intent of selling before reaching the maturity. Because they are reported at the fair value, some adjustments are needed. Whether the adjustment is unrealized gain or loss, it will appear in the equity section of the balance sheet. Uh, yeah, I got it. This video is undoubtedly more helpful than any other available sources. Now, gotta work and impress my boss. Yeehaw.